Hi everyone, Konnichiwa, it's React from Japan and today I'm gonna be checking out this video called 10 Myths You Still Believe About World War II so please enjoy 10 Myths You Still Believe About World War II Number 10, Nukes Ended the War Accepted wisdom is that the war concluded with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, prompting the Japanese Empire to surrender in fear of future nuclear annihilation. But as with all things historical, it's not quite so simple. Some historians have argued that while those bombings were historic for their hmm. individual destructive I've, potential, do you guys know this, um, Japan in 1945, this comic called Barefoot Gan, people and it's a Hadashi no Gan in Japanese. Points. It's about a boy who was living in Hiroshima during the uh, World War II. Hours before the Nagasaki strike. So if you want to know like Japanese like perspective army during the war, the please read that in comics. Spot. It's argued that this move had a much greater impact on the decision Ken. to call it quits, since surrendering to the U.S. was preferable to allowing Stalin to violently remove the emperor. Number nine, Hitler's hmm. Iron Fist. On top of being pure evil. Everyone remembers Hitler as the archetypical dictator who ruled both the public and the military to unwavering loyalty. But you might be a little bit off with the second one, since Hitler's military was actually pretty disappointing. He didn't always have Navy that mustache, right? Eric Rieder was said to have had hour long shouting matches with the Fuhrer in defiance of him, and there are even reports of naval officers having to drop their Nazi Party membership in order to sign up, since the Navy prized country over party. And that's not to mention Wilhelm Canaris, an admiral who leaked Axis secrets and used his position of authority to help plan the failed plot to assassinate Hitler in 1944. And not least of all, the army consistently ignored Hitler's order to stop absorbing so-called racially inferior Russian troops into German ranks, eventually accepting 700,000 soldiers to fight for the Nazis by 1942. Number eight, it was a single worldwide conflict. There's a good chance that when you think of World War II, you imagine a consolidated campaign of good against evil between 1939 and 1945. But when yeah. you dig a bit deeper, it wasn't just Axis versus Allies. It was a nebulous and messy cluster of individual conflicts. For one thing, historians don't even agree when the whole thing kicked off. Other than Poland in 1939, some point to the 1937 outbreak of the Second Sino-Japanese War, the 1935 Italian-Ethiopian conflict, or even as far back as the border skirmishes between Japan and the Soviet Union in 1932. And the Axis forces didn't even have the same goals. Mussolini supported Hitler's policies, but sought to bolster his own colonial goals in Ethiopia. And Japan didn't share Nazi social views despite its shift to the far right, even signing a non-aggression pact with the USSR while Germany was fighting it. Number seven, German mechanization. Nazi Germany has a reputation as a military juggernaut, with highly advanced divisions of tanks as the driving force of the war effort. But the reality of Hitler's army was that it was actually one of the least mechanized forces in the war. People often look at the Blitzkrieg capture of France to show Germany's military advancement. But 119 of the 135 divisions involved in the mm. offensive used cavalry rather than armored vehicles. Compare that to the UK, which was almost entirely mechanized by 1939. And often when Germany did boast of a large mechanized force in battles, it would be made of seized French and Soviet tanks. So where did the mechanization myth come from? Well, Germany had an expert propaganda department, and it would make sure to over-exaggerate the few tank-heavy divisions it did possess in films, giving the impression that they represented the army at large. Sneaky. Number six, the Axis could have won. People generally believe that World War II was a struggle down to the hmm. wire between Axis and Allied forces, to the point where the West could have all been speaking German now. But in truth, Germany's chances appear to have been exaggerated as World War II legend grew. The historical consensus is that the Axis's failure wasn't a matter of if, but of when. The early capture of France gave many the impression that Germany was an unstoppable bulldozer through Europe, but Blitzkrieg warfare merely functioned as a short-term tactical advantage rather than an effective strategy to defeat the Nazis' strongest adversaries, the UK, the USA, and the USSR. That's particularly true of the Soviets, who were outproducing the Nazis in terms of supplies and equipment to a point where they who could never win video? a protracted assault. Hitler himself knew that a quick capture of Russia was his only chance, which clearly didn't happen. 
you could argue that had Germany succeeded in the Battle of Britain, less I mean, by who made this video? I mean, which Russia, nationality? Is they American or? Game over. Are we American? Five, but... In it together. American For anyone person. who's not familiar, there's an idea that everyone in the UK put aside their considerable class differences to get through the war together. It wasn't uncommon to hear that people from all walks of life would gather in the tunnels of the London Underground to escape German V2 bombs over the city. But in They're reality, smiling. only around oh 70,000 of the city's 8 million residents hid in the tunnels. And they were mostly working class since wealthier people had their own bunkers. And on top of that, bombed buildings were regularly looted and counterfeits stolen and fraudulent ration books ran wild. But the British government knew that morale was key to the war effort since keeping up supply lines was incredibly important to sustaining the army. So it pushed the narrative of togetherness despite considerable divides and resentment. Number four, Franklin D. Roosevelt predicted Pearl Harbor. There's a popular and long-standing conspiracy theory that Franklin D. Roosevelt was fully aware of the impending Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, but refused to prevent it in order to create a pretext for entering the war. But no matter how many documents are declassified, historians dismiss the idea as utter nonsense. According to Rob Satino of the National World War II Museum and FDR's biographer Jean Edward Smith, there was no evidence of any such correspondences passing White through House. Washington. In fact, FDR advocated crippling Japan through economic sanctions rather than warfare. Documents uncovered in 2011 did show suspicions over Japanese residents spying in Hawaii, but nothing predicted an attack on U.S. soil. If anything, there was worry over U.S. bases in the Philippines, but no one in the U.S. believed Japan would be audacious enough to send a fighting force that far across the Pacific. Number three, Churchill was a hero. Winston Churchill is fondly remembered as Britain's greatest prime minister and the hero behind its military victories. He was a great wartime leader, but many, even at the time, felt that he wasn't up to the job of, you know, actually being prime minister. In 1944, a conservative member of parliament called Sir Cuthbert Hedlam said never was a party so leaderless as the Conservative Party is today in reference to Churchill's lack of domestic governance outside of the war effort. Not to mention that he was seen to have troubling views even for his time, like advocating chemical warfare, comparing Muslims to rabid dogs, and denying black people had been wronged by slavery. The most damning evidence is that as soon as the war ended, Churchill lost the 1945 election by a historic landslide, probably because he didn't have the policies to compete with Labour's National Health Service. Hmm. Number two, America won the war. Common knowledge, especially if you're American, is that the US Army swept in to save a European military that was lagging in the face of German aggression. And while the USA's contribution to the war effort can't be understated, it would just be false to claim that they won it all. That interpretation of the war grossly downplays the efforts of the USSR. For example, soldiers on the Western Front spent a combined 16.5 million months fighting whereas Eastern Front soldiers spent 406 million between them. That's 25 times as long. And at 11 million casualties, the USSR suffered more deaths than the other combatant nations in Europe combined. And that's not to mention Stalingrad, which is considered one of the bloodiest battles in history with nearly 2 million combined casualties. The Soviet victory proved a major demoralizing force for Hitler in the later years of the war. Number one, only the Axis committed war crimes. The prevailing view of World War II was that of the just, virtuous Allied soldiers versus the cruel, treacherous Axis. After all, the Nazis were responsible for one of the greatest atrocities in history with the Holocaust. And while the Allied powers never even came close to genocide in the war, there were shameful moments that have gone largely overlooked. Despite being a matter of record, few people are aware of the US's actions during its Pacific occupation, where forces murdered thousands of Japanese soldiers who could have been taken prisoner, routinely mutilated dead Japanese soldiers by stabbing their corpses with bayonets, and decapitated them to use their skulls as souvenirs. And women in Okinawa, Japan, claim that sexual abuse was widespread among US forces during the occupation. Some academic estimates suggest as many as 10,000 victims. And that's not to mention the Catan massacre of 22,000 Polish nationals in 1940 by Soviet secret police, all of which is harrowing to say the least. That was 10 myths you still believe about World War II. Which one surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe. And while you're at it, check out this great all-time tens video on screen right now.
All right, so that was um, 10 myths you still believe about World War II. I'm not sure if these are accurate, but one thing I'm accurate for sure is that war should not be repeated again, and there should be no nuclear weapon produced, and there should be no World War III. I really hope there's gonna be peace worldwide, and I hope that if I think I believe I strongly believe that if we spread peace from one person to one person, from me to you, there will be a peaceful world. Um, Thank you for watching today. Um, if you guys have any recommendations of what videos I should check out, please leave it in the comment section below. Alright, thank you very much for watching today.